starting the introduction to Titus. First of all, um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention on the welcome video, which uh, I had all planned out what I was going to say on the welcome video, and then when I got on, I couldn't remember any of it. So <laughs> I'm sorry that that was um, a little bit uh, spacey. <laughs> on that video but um, one thing I forgot to mention is that I like to do a door prize drawing so what I'm going to do is if you do do the homework um, the homework is not required but if you do it um, send well, if you post something to the page or the um, messenger group, then I will see that way that you did your homework. Um, but if you don't want to do that, send me a message um, and let me know that you did it, did your homework, did, did the reading or um, memorized a verse or whatever, um, so that uh, I can put your name in the drawing for the door prize and also um, sometimes I might get names of people that um, that I see watched the video um, and so I'm, in the past I've done those I've only done those who watch the live video I think I might um, not make it just a live video this time. I think I might make it um, just if you watch the video at any time during the week, then um, I'll put your name in. So, um, so yeah, and then I usually won't put a name in um, if you've already, if I've already drawn your name that, uh, that month. So if you win during the month of February, then you'll be put back in maybe in March. So, um, anyway, then, uh, then I have some just cute, cutesy stuff that I give away and, um, you know, if you go to my church, then I can bring it to you at church or however it works out for me to get it to you. Um, so, when, when I tell you the homework um, during the next video, you can be working on that and let me know if you finish it or not. And then um, also... Um, I wanted to maybe do some, like, meeting type things, you know, like a Zoom meeting or whatever. Um, that was actually what I had planned for my, uh, I mean, kind of what I had in mind originally for the Bible studies, but then it didn't really work out to do it that way. Um, but maybe we can do that sometimes um, before the Bible study and kind of talk about some of the things that, um, we've learned just through the reading and stuff. So, um, I'm thinking around seven on Saturday evenings, but let me know what you guys think about that idea. Um, if there's enough people interested, we will do it. Um, I did have someone mention it to me at church, um, and so um, I think I've thrown the idea out there in the past, but I'm throwing it out again, so let me know if that's something you'll want to do or not. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get started. Um, we are studying the book of Titus right now. And there's a lot we can learn in any book of the Bible. Um, 
And yes, Titus was specifically written to a, um, a young man and, or I guess I don't know how old he was, but, <laughs> um, to a man, um, but we, the biblical principles are the same, are the same for men and women. And then also, um, if it, if, if a passage does only apply to a man, um, this, it can help us to know how to pray for them and how to, um, encourage them in their role as a man. Um, and actually that was, um, uh, something that was mentioned to me by, uh, Mrs. Corey as well, that, um, um, that even if you're just learning about the role of a man, at least it tells us how to pray for them. But I think there's a lot we can learn about women as well. And um, in fact, in chapter two, it specifically addresses um, women. So in, uh, yeah, in several verses there in chapter two. But anyway, <laughs> Paul um, had assigned Titus to strengthen a previously established church work on the Isle of Crete is what um, we believe. This island southeast of Greece is about 150 miles long and 35 miles wide, thus making it the largest of the Mediterranean islands. Um, there were about a hundred cities on the island. The island was mountainous, but also had very fertile valleys. And this is, this is information that I pulled out of um, Wilmington's Guide to the Bible. Um, so, the highest mountain, Mount Ida, was the traditional birthplace of the Greek god Zeus. The Cretans were relatives of the Philistines. They had a no notorious reputation of being always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. And we actually see that in Titus 1.12. It says, One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always, li always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. So um, they had that that bad reputation of being untrustworthy and lazy, basically. This testimony came from one of their own poets and prophets. The origin of the church there is unknown, but it may have been started by the same returning Cretans present at Pentecost. So Acts 2.11 Acts 2.11 says, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth, what meaneth this? So um, there were Cretes and Arabians there at Pentecost. Um, um, seeing the miracle of everyone being able to hear in their own language, hear what the, um, what the preachers were saying, but hear it in their own language. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of the background of Titus. And then there are three pastoral epistles that can be compared to each other. Um, Titus emphasizes duty, and in First and Second Timothy, we see that the child of God is to protect the gospel and proclaim it, and yeah, and proclaim it. So, um, and those three books have a lot in common if you read through them. A summary of the person and ministry of Titus. 
would include that he was probably a convert of Paul. We see in Titus 1, 4, it says, um, To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Um, so Paul called him his own son after the common faith. <laughs> And then Titus first appears in the sacred account when he accompanied Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem. Galatians 2.1 says, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Um, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So, um, Paul, Paul and Barnabas took Titus with them to Jerusalem on that occasion. Paul later sent him to Corinth to straighten out certain disorders. He then met Paul in Macedonia and was sent back to Corinth carrying 2 Corinthians to pave the way for Paul's coming and to complete their offering. 2 Corinthians 2.3 says, And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. Um, so Titus was probably the one who carried that letter to the Corinthians. Um, 2 Corinthians 2, 12, um, 12 and 13, it says, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was open unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. And then um, 7, 5 through 6, 2 Corinthians 7, 5 through 6, For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side, without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. So Titus... Um, was was a comfort to Paul there in Macedonia. And then 13 through 14, same chapter, 2 Corinthians 7, 13 and 14 says, Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I had have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed, but as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting which I made before Titus is found a truth. So um, Paul was able to rejoice that Titus brought um, good news about how the church was um, carrying on there in Corinth. And then um, 2 Corinthians 8, 16 and 17 says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care for the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. Um, so Titus cared about the people in Corinth, just as Paul did. And then verse 23 2 Corinthians 8, 23, whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Um, and then 12, 14, 2 Corinthians 12, 14 says, behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will be—I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you, for the ch 
Children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And then um, verse 18, 2 Corinthians 12, 18 says, I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Um, so um, he's talking about how um, t he and Titus both felt the same way towards the church of Corinth and they they um, ministered to them unselfishly uh, without requesting payment and um, and they had a a desire to see that church grow in the Lord um, and so, yeah, and so we see Titus mentioned several times in the book of 2 Corinthians. Um, so now, when we come to the book of Titus, um, we already kind of have an idea of who he is. All right. He is last mentioned in 2 Timothy 4.10, at which time Paul sent him from southern Greece to Dalmatia, a province roughly equivalent to the former Yugoslavia. So, um, 2 Timothy 4, starting in verse 9, it says, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is parted unto Thessalonica. Cre to Galatia, Titus, unto Dalmatia. So, um, so Paul is saying that he was left alone and um, in that instance, I think he's asking Timothy to come to him. Um, but hang on. I have to plug in my computer. It's, um, it's telling me the battery is low. All right, so. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, So it doesn't say that Titus had forsaken him. It says Demas forsook him, um, but um, that the Cretans have gone to Galatia and Titus has gone to Talmatia. Um, so Titus was um, was probably just you know on another missionary journey basically um and so paul was left there by himself all right um so in his introduction paul presents himself here in titus in regard to the son he was an apostle titus 1 1 says paul a servant of god and an apostle of jesus christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. God's ordained method for communicating his word is not through personal, personal dialogue, but through pulpit delivery. So, um, so Paul uh, presents himself as based, um basically as a preacher um yeah and he's not just what am i saying he's not just um 
sharing, he's not just writing this book as, um, as a friend, but as an apostle, as someone who um, is wanting to spread God's message and to um, yeah <laughs> um, okay so I'm sorry I lost my train of thought there so let's move on <laughs> Titus 1 1 through 9 um, let's read verse 9 it says holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Um, so F.B. Meyer said that God's elect are known by their faith, and wherever they hear the voice of truth, which makes for godliness, they recognize and acknowledge it. Um, so when Christians hear the voice of truth, we recognize it as truth and we acknowledge it as um, truth. When we hear God's word, um, as a Christian, we are able to recognize the truth and reject the, um, reject what is not true. Hebrews 6, 19 and 20 says, we hope we have as an anchor for, of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth, sorry. <laughs> All right, let me start over. Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made in high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Um, so, we, we have that privilege of entering directly to God, entering within the veil, as it says. Um, of approaching God's throne directly um, and we can receive um, guidance from him through his Holy Spirit. Um, F.B. Meyer said God's promise for us has been in his heart from all eternity but it was hidden until the gospel was proclaimed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Note the frequent recurrence in this epistle of the phrase, God our Savior. Um, in Titus, it says, God our Savior, over and over again. So, um, I guess where I was going with Hebrews 6 is that um, God's, in the past, there was a veil of separation. Um, in the Old Testament, they did not fully comprehend all that God was going to do. Um, and of course, we, we don't fully comprehend all of it either, but we comprehend so much more. We, the, the, the message of the gospel is no longer a mystery to us. Um, when we read the Bible, we can understand that all we have to do is come directly to God and receive salvation. Um, so, F.B. Meyer also says the presiding officers must be godly and consistent men. This is um, this is from from Titus one one through nine. Um, so the presiding officers must be godly and consistent men and able to commend the gospel by their lives. Many are the seducing voices in the present day that counsel slackening faith and relaxing grasp. Um, so that's what Titus 1, 1 through 9 is basically about, um, about the preaching. 
about the about and recognizing the voice of truth about um the proclamation of the gospel and the unveiling of the gospel and um and about the um responsibility of the preacher all right um so The recipient of this book is a young pastor named Titus, obviously. <laughs> he was a convert of Paul, um, which we already saw in Titus 1-4. And he was probably from Syrian Antioch and was apparently one of Paul's closest and most trusted companions. He is mentioned 13 times in Paul's epistles. Some believe he may have been the brother of Luke. On Paul's third missionary journey, Titus is sent by Paul to Corinth to straighten out certain disorders in the church there and to initiate an offering for the poor saints at Jerusalem. 2 Corinthians 8, 6, um, starting in verse 5, it says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Insomuch that we desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Oh, sorry, I jumped down to verse 10. All right, so yeah, verse 10. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. Um, so Titus, Titus was entrusted with the task of um, trying to straighten out this church. <laughs> he is last mentioned in 2 Timothy 4.10, at which time Paul sends him from southern Greece to Dalmatia. The Dalmatia was the area east of the Adriatic Sea, similar to, U to former Yugoslavia, including parts of Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina. Um, Mon Montenegro and Albania. So uh, that whole area <laughs> was called Dalmatia at that time. Um, okay, so we already saw that Titus was pastoring on the island of Crete when he received this epistle. And um, And we talked some about the island of Crete. And then Titus is facing the formidable task of setting in order the existing churches at Crete. Qualified spiritual leaders must be appointed and all age and gender groups must be instructed on their duties as Christians. The problem of immortality at Crete makes it important for Titus to teach the importance of righteousness. Hang on. I think that's supposed to be immorality because I don't think that the Cretans had immortality. <laughs> All right, sorry. Sorry about that. The problem of immorality at Crete makes it important for Titus to teach the importance of righteousness. Um, false teachers make the establishment of sound doctrine essential. So, um, and there was a problem of immorality at Crete, but, um, but they were getting a good, um, church 
established, but they were having problems um, with discerning um, false teachers. So, anyway, we're going to look some more at that later on. Right now, um, I am going to go ahead and draw this video to a close. I know that we haven't looked at a lot of uh, profound uh, things in this in this book yet. It has just been an introduction, which it's been basically a lot of background so far. But um, but I hope that it has been enough to get you interested in this book of Titus, which we will delve into more next time. Um, I do plan to make another video tonight. Um, it's already 10 o'clock. I did not realize it was that late, guys. Um, <laughs> But I think I'm going to try to go ahead and get the other video done. I don't expect every, everyone to stay up and watch it tonight. Um, but hopefully you can watch it next week. And like I said, next week I'm going to try to focus on getting the Spanish video done. Um, and then... Just... I, oh, I'm going to try to post a schedule on the um, Facebook page, on the ladies group Facebook page, not on the church Facebook page, um, so that you can kind of see where we're at as we go along here. Um, you know, what our, what our plan is, where, what chapter we'll be in, what week, and all that. Um, okay, and then the homework for this week, or for the, this week and next week, is to read Titus chapter 1 five times and then memorize a verse from Titus chapter 1. So you get to choose which verse you want to memorize from that chapter. Um, but uh, just, yeah, let me know if you're able to do that, to do the homework, and, um, and then it'd be great to hear what you're learning from the passage. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great night.